away the Abyls Mafia. Make sure you follow us all over the social media platforms, including on Twitter. The handle there is at builtinbuffalo underscore. Again, that's at builtinbuffalo underscore. And I am thrilled to bring on to the program somebody who is fresh off of going to the NFL Combine. We're going to you know, kind of dive into that, where the Bills may go in the draft, what he learned there about the Bills, and many other things uh, around the league as well. He is an NFL insider and staff writer for The Athletic. Matthew Gutierrez, my good pal, at Matthew GUT21 on Twitter. Hey, Matthew. Hey, Mike. How's it going, man? Thanks so much for having me. No doubt, man. No doubt. Let's get into the combine a little bit. You spent a few days out in Indianapolis. Um, the, the question I have is, do you think the, the, the combine is more overrated or underrated? Yeah, it's a good, it's a good question. Um, you know, me personally, I think it's, it's a little bit overrated. I will say from, uh, being out there, I was only there three days. So, you know, about half the week, um, having heard, uh, from some colleagues who, you know, pretty much we had almost every team represented every beat writer there, including, including bills, which we can get into, but everyone basically said, look, I mean, most of the people they talk to, most of the personnel and, and these teams that they talk to say, they're basically there to, you know, maybe connect with their own colleagues, connect with other people in the league. It's basically sort of more of a networking event. Yes, there is some evaluation, um, but it's really more for that interpersonal um, component. And then also the medical being really important part of the combine and the measurables and, and all the about medical evaluation that way more than, you know, 40 yard dash or, you know, player X, runs a certain route, makes a nice catch, you know, that sort of thing is, look, I mean, you should probably saw it. all these guys look really good in a clinic type setting, right? It's pretty hard to distinguish. So I think it's more for those, those other reasons is really what, what people draw from. So yeah, probably, a, probably a little overrated. We'll get into the bills in a sec. I have one more overall combine question and, and then we'll jump to Buffalo, but, um, did you see a couple of guys just really rising in terms of stock? I think Kyle Hamilton has got to be, you know, in that conversation. A lot of mock drafts have him, you know, being picked as as early as number two now. Um, him, Jordan Davis, obviously making some headlines. What about guys whose stock just went completely up? Because we see this every year, Matthew. Yeah, we do. Um Kyle, definitely a name, and I, you might have gotten that from The Athletic, or, or I mean, there's so many mock drafts now, but I believe we had him at number two um, this morning or the other day uh, coming out of the combine. So, um, yeah, he, he, yeah, he actually probably is, was the guy I would go with. Uh, I didn't really see him all that much, but just based on what I've read, uh, I think he's the guy who has made that rise. And look, to your point, I mean, just zooming out, um, it is interesting, an event like this, you know, as, as overblown as it might be, there are a couple uh, players who really benefit from this sort of thing, right? A, a real chance to, you know, while some of it's a little bit canned, to just show show who they are, show their physical traits a little bit um, and, and rise up really, really late in the process. And he's definitely one of those guys. We'll see what happens uh, next month. But I think he's someone who, who certainly benefited uh, from, from a really good showing. It's the Pandemonium Podcast, part of the Built in Buffalo Podcast Network. I'm Mike Lindsley, Matthew Gutierrez, our guest from The Athletic, talking some NFL Combine and the Buffalo Bills. When you were there, um, what was the feeling of what they might do with number 25 in the first round? Oof, tough one. Uh, you know, I don't know. Um, we're going we're gonna to see. Um, look, I think even having just – run into uh some of our bills guys and our buffalo editor uh we we more so discussed um uh obviously last season but really what they're going to do free agency wise coming up here uh, in about a week uh players under contract to move on from and um you know restructures to, to make room for some additional cap space um as well so that we really spent um more time there than obviously who they might try to poach um but as far as as far as draft wise, you know that'll be really interesting to see see who they go with. It's going to be an interesting draft. Um, I don't know, Mike. I mean, where do you kind of see them going? Well, they're I mean they're kind of in a in a spot where I think they could go in, in a couple different directions based on you know the signing yeah. um, 
of of or the restructuring of contracts, you know, cutting people, etc. I mean, Kenyon Green has been a, a popular one, an offensive guard uh, out of Texas A and M. Um, you know, they might go D line, they could go corner. I, I think Brandon Bean will stay at twenty five or trade down. I don't think he wants to trade up because I think they need as much draft capital as possible. You know, now that they're up against the cap like this, but I, I could see him going offensive line. I could also see him going wide receiver, which. You know, my man Ryan Talbot had, had mentioned on a podcast last week, I think, you know, don't lose your fastball. And, you know, maybe they go with a Jamison Williams, who I know he tore his ACL in the title game. But, you know, if they take him uh, and they wait for him to, to, to get back in, in, at full strength, he might be the next game breaker in the NFL for all we know. I mean, that's look at the speed now, right? Cooper Cup, Tyree Kill, uh, you, you look at all those type of players. Um, you know, Jamar Chase, who can just catch it six, seven yards and they're gone. Uh, I think the Bills, they're probably going to look into that area too, you know. So I, I think receiver, O-line, D-line, I think those are all on the table, and I think they'll take a corner later. Yeah, and interior line, um, obviously possibility. It is a pretty deep draft. It's not like a, necessarily a star-studded, front, front-heavy, front front-loaded draft, but it is certainly uh, deep, and to your point, some good, some good um, really good depth at wide receiver. So Bills might look there. Um, and, you know, I think I had seen, I believe it was one of our writers, uh, you know, make the pretty decent case, you know, Bill's trade that, that number 25 pick um, elsewhere and, and maybe get something in the 40s or 50s. So that's another possibility. We'll see what they want to do. I think, uh, uh, you know, they still have some things to, to feel out. And again, it might be a little bit dependent on how, how the next few weeks go with free agency, right? I mean, that, that could certainly uh, factor into things. Yeah, there's no doubt. So, with you mentioning that, you know, you talked to a lot of the, 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 the Buffalo people, you know, I, Biscalia was probably there uh, with, with you guys and, and a bunch of other Buffalo people. You mentioned last season. Um, is the overwhelming feeling from people like, hey, things are still good, they're in the right direction, uh, they've got number 17, you know, behind center, uh, or is it more on the other side of, man, they really did blow an opportunity last year when they were – you know, they had that game one at Kansas City. They had an AFC title game on a silver platter hosted in Buffalo. They had just closed out business in Arrowhead. What? Where do most people you talk to land? Which side? Yeah, it's a it's a really good talking point. I've, I've heard you touch on it quite a bit in the last few months, obviously since January. Um, I mean, just a really interesting season overall. And there's just so many ways you could have gone uh, as far as takeaways. You know, such an up and down uh, regular season, certainly, I would think by most measures, over underwhelmed. Um, you know, most expectations coming in, especially you know, from a national level. Um, and then look, they come as pretty much as close as possible to making that second straight AFC title game, um, and then the dramatic exit. So, um, you know, look, I think uh, for from what I had heard, and I'm, I'm not nearly as well sourced as some of our Bills guys. I think there's definitely some. Uh, really strong optimism heading into next year. Again, to your point, you have a star uh, young QB who seems to just be really growing nicely. Uh, you know, we, we, we had texted back and forth, right? Even during, uh, tw- you know, a year ago playoffs where he was, you know, a little shaky. And then even during the regular season, this just a few months ago, right? There were some games there where you're like, this is, this is probably not a Super Bowl caliber guy. And I think he totally... Uh, negated all of that in the, in the playoffs. He really stepped up. And I think Allen, um, you know, is just someone that they'll have, be able to build around for, for years to come. And obviously they have a, an excellent roster around him as is. Uh, but just to continue to add those little pieces uh, that they need to just get get that next step. Um, so as far, that's that's my viewpoint. And, I, you know, I had seen some of my colleagues, they also felt that there's a there's certainly a strong sense of, of that what, what could have been. Uh, I think... Uh, that was we had that in, in today's um, the athletic, but uh, just the you know not only among fans but among the team as well I, that they really um, put themselves in a really good position and, and it, it it is still disappointing and I think it does sting in Buffalo um, circles for, from how it ended um, and that's not to say that they can't move forward but it, it does sting and hey maybe they use that as a little bit of momentum a little bit of motivation to really go out and, and make this team the best they can the next couple months. Are you concerned at all with Sean McDermott as head coach? Like, can, can they get to the next level 
with him, a guy who seems like he has, you know, a little bit of a conservative approach, uh, a guy who, you know, game managing is up and down. Um, I don't know what the hell they were doing on defense in the last 13 seconds there. You know, KC with two timeouts, he plays the corners to the outside, you know, Hill and Kelsey, it's bing, bing, and, and timeout, timeout, and they kick the field goal, and then the rest is history. Um, you know, that, that that's a McDermott call. I, I don't know what happened on the kickoff, you know, because he won't mm-hmm. tell anybody. And I that's another part of this, too. I think he owes an explanation to to, to Bill's Mafia. I, I, I'm not always a big, like, oh, you got to help the fans. You got to tell the fans. But this fan base, I think he, I think he owes it to them. Um, do you think they can get to the next level with him as a head coach? Yeah, it's a, it's a great point. I was going to say, we'd be remiss without saying the kickoff. Right? I think we even texted about it. You know, R- Tony Romo, but, you know, calls it right as it's up on the air. And I was like, oh, that's a good point. Didn't think it was going to actually impact the game. And of course it was, it was monumental, right? That's, that's something that, you know, whether it's his call or, or someone else's, someone needs to be, or he relays it to another coach, right? And then that coach relays it um, to special teams, but that needs to be, uh, those types of things need to be addressed. And to your point, I think um, he does owe an explanation. Not that he has to explain every single thing, but sure, something just that, something. that big. Yeah. That's something that big. People are people are owed that, right? Absolutely, and especially that significant. Um, so yeah, to your point, you know, my initial reaction is yes. I'd like I'd like to give him the benefit of the doubt. A couple more se- seasons to try to break through here. I think he's, you know, by all accounts, very very brilliant football mind i don't think there's much debate there but to your point the end game management and especially those last minute um decisions down the stretch there really cost them and look the, the fact of the matter is they could do very well next you know this fall in the regular season they could really position themselves get a couple wins uh in the playoffs but when, when, it, when you're talking about a, a championship game or the super bowl uh, it's very likely going to come down to a couple of small decisions, right? I mean, you look at all these scores, not only this past NFL playoffs, which was beyond exciting, but just the past several, really. Um, for the most part, these games are very tight, and everyone's talented, everyone's hot, everyone's had a pretty good regular season for the most part, or at least a very strong uh, second half or, or last third of the year. Uh, so everyone's hot coming in, and, um, you know, the Bills are going to need more than just what's on the field, right? They're going to really need someone who's making uh, at times, you know, aggressive, sometimes risky, smart uh, decision-making. And, you know, he still has that to prove. I think that's still left on the table. There are a lot of people who feel that if the Bills had finished business in Kansas City, uh, now look, the Bengals could have gone into Buffalo and won, no question. They did it at Kansas City and they made a hell of a run. But a lot of people feel like it would have been an, to another level if Buffalo was hosting that game and that the Bills would have found a way to get it done because of fate, because of, going, you know, I don't know, going back in time with the 90s. It's their time, whatever you want to say. And then people feel like they would have won the Super Bowl. Do you feel that if they would have closed business in Kansas City that we would be talking about the Buffalo Bills finally winning a championship? Yeah, I think I think it's very possible. Of course, neither one of us. There's no way of, of knowing. Um, but but the way you just framed it there, and having looked at how well they were playing, I mean, you know, I think we've even texted back and forth about it. The way that all, I, you know, obviously we can touch on the defense, and you you mentioned it there a couple minutes ago, but uh, it's another story. But that offense, man, I mean, that thing was clicking. I mean, Allen and company matched Mahomes pretty much every move, right? And that was a obviously an excellent Chiefs offense. Uh, I think you know if the Bills had just cleaned up a little bit on the defense, just to get oh I don't know mediocre at best on the defensive end. I think in a you know very manageable uh, next game or two versus Cincinnati, and and then the uh, and then the Rams. You know presumably I think you you have a pretty good shot. Uh, you know, it, it's certainly a head scratch, right? What, what could have been there? Um, and again, I think that that's probably more of the prevailing sentiment in the in the Bills um, franchise, right? Like, what what could we have done here? And I think they re- even almost even more so after the fact, right? To see what Cincinnati did, I think the Bills probably felt like that that should have been them. Josh Allen, do you think he has any holes right now? 
uh, no, I mean, is, is, uh, is overconfidence a whole? I don't think so. Not when you can match it with your ability, right? I think he's got, um, I think it's a really good thing that he's, he's almost to an, to an extent overly confident because it gives him such an edge and it makes him, um, take risks and it makes him, oh, he's just balling. Right. I mean, it was so fun to watch, you know, I've, Right after the a couple of days after the game, I just rewatched uh, some of those some of those drives he had led just just for fun, just from a pure pure football appreciation um, basis. Uh, I think he's he's evolved so much in just the last year or two. Uh, I think he's still twenty five, right? Correct me if I'm wrong. Maybe mm-hmm. twenty? Did he just turn twenty six? I think he's twenty five still. Um, I mean, he's a, he's a puppy. He's extraordinary. Uh, he's big. He's he's moving so well, and and you know, Mike, the decision making uh, is on such a trajectory that it's only going to continue to improve. Um, the split second decisions, the last minute reads, the the wherewithal to, to tell guys where they need to be in tight moments late in games is that stuff only comes with time, right? He had those raw t- that raw skill that now we're seeing all those you know quote unquote intangibles come into play here and it's making him uh, really dangerous and you know he could he could become one of the top couple uh qbs in the whole league very soon matthew gutierrez from the athletic uh talking nfl combine and buffalo bills with us here on the pandemonium podcast a couple more for you matt and by the way he turns 26 on may 21st so in, in a couple of months here um the overriding feeling with the quarterbacks from the combine compared to the quarterbacks we have in the league is, is what, you know, are, are all these guys, you know, enough of that mobile mode, you know, mold, right? Because that's what it is right now. I mean, you've got to be able to be quick inside and outside the pocket. You got to be able to throw on the run. You got to be able to see a play that's broken and like an Allen or whoever, and be able to run for a first down, uh, the scrambling ability, uh, all of those things. Plus you need that pocket presence of just the standalone and, you know, tippy tap and, and, and throw, throw it from within the pocket. Right. So you need that combination, the Allens, the Mahomes, the Lamars, uh, Russell Wilson, on and on it goes. Uh, Joe Burrow even can do it to a certain extent. What about that, that group, you know, the Kenny Pickett's and company from the combine compared to the group that we have now in the NFL? Is there anybody in that mold? Yeah, n- not really. I mean, it was a pretty, you know, there, there's some definitely some intriguing solid prospects there. Um, who would probably be, you know, pretty good fits, uh, maybe not excellent fits um, long term, but pretty good fits for teams with a couple of years under their belt. Um, but to your point, I don't think there was necessarily um, any a couple guys who really stand out as like, oh wow, they're going to thrive in this league. It seems like Malik. It seems like Malik. Up. It seems like Malik Willis is a guy who people yeah. are are comparing to Allen a little bit from the standpoint that he has home run potential. But he's a real project. I saw him play against Syracuse in the dome. Um, mm-hmm. He he looked he looks to me looks really good, and and he could be he could be the closest thing to anybody in the NFL at the top level from that at least. Hey, he's got the potential to be a home run quarterback. You know, he's just got to he's got to get the coaching and he's got to fix up some accuracy. Yeah, yeah, he's a guy you should pro- you probably fit into that category. Uh, I think he's about six foot. Um, so he's not all that tall, obviously, uh, has some wheels to move. He's not definitely not Josh's size or, or the size of some of these other guys, but as we've seen, you know, Dak's not, not all that tall. Kyler is obviously what five ten maybe uh, on a good day. <laughs> so, you know, you can obviously, you can thrive in, in today's league, um, by, by moving with your legs. Um, yeah, I mean, Malik's, I didn't, I didn't really catch him much at that Liberty game. Um, I had heard kind of mixed reviews, yeah. like he was good, but certainly a lot of people didn't think he was draft worthy, but Hey, that, those are from Syracuse people. Right. So, what, you know, they don't have too much uh, experience as far as draft wise, but, but no, with, with Malik, I, you know, his ceiling is certainly interesting. Uh, I think he's probably more, more ready than, than he's gotten credit for. Uh, he's certainly going to be more of a project guy though. Just need a little bit of time, but as we've seen with Josh and some, you know, countless examples, right. If you're, so much of it is not so much where you're picked, right? We've talked about this on the basketball side too. Not so much where you're picked, but but to to where you go and what the matchup is um, in terms of the coaching style and overall offensive scheme, right? And you could be a 
you know, if Josh had maybe gotten selected to a different organization that had a lot of uh, issues, uh, you know, off the top of my head, like a, like a Jacksonville type situation, you have a coaching change, you're in a complete rebuild. I think his career trajectory looks a lot different. He doesn't get that sort of compound growth that he's had now with, with Buffalo. So I think same, same goes for, for, for Willis. It's just going to be a matter of kind of where he can get in and who develops him is going to be really important. If he can get that right match. Yes. I do think he, he could be a guy who, fits that mold that you mentioned maybe not at patrick's level or at josh allen's level but but sort of in that mold yeah there's so much that goes into a quarterback being elite in this yeah. league it's unbelievable my final question for you matthew is this if if josh allen were to eventually deliver a super bowl to buffalo do you think that he would surpass um, certainly from the younger group he would because he's their guy. My guy's Jim Kelly, and Josh Allen is closely, you know, closely closing that gap, uh, quickly closing that gap, I should say, uh, much like the way Jeter did for Mattingly, and then Jeter surpassed Mattingly for me. Do you think Josh Allen would surpass, for people my age or older, Jim Kelly in, 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 in the ranks of quarterbacks uh, for, for the history of the franchise if you were to deliver a championship? Uh, possibly if it happens next season, I think he makes himself a strong case and we'll see in what manner, you know, he presumably would, would do this, right. What's around him, I think plays a role. How does the season span out? Where does Josh evolve next plays a role, but you know, we do have a little bit of recency bias. So maybe that plays a role here. And I'm, I'm obviously a younger guy too. So I don't quite have that decades and decades of context, but yeah, I'm, from what I've read about both guys, um, obviously I've had to read more about Kelly than, than watch. Um, I think Josh certainly would really make a case if he can just win that one elusive title uh, in Buffalo. And I had, I had seen some things floating around the last few weeks. Uh, a number of analysts, former players, have said Josh is, is arguably the best uh, quarterback in the league right now. He's right up there pretty much with Aaron Rodgers. Um, and, and that's a sentiment I think some several teams – outside of Buffalo, uh, believe, and that's how much respect he's gotten. So I think a title and to be able to win uh, at the highest level in, you know, January slash early February, I think that would speak volumes. And yeah, probably cement him as, you know, potentially number one for sure in Buffalo. Matthew Gutierrez, the athletic NFL staff writer. Thanks a lot, my man. Great catching up. Mike, thanks so much. Always a blast. <laughs>